If you have PCOS and you have no digestive problems whatsoever, then that is great for you and this video is not for you. If you have PCOS and you do have digestive problems, you get bloating, you have pain, you don't go to the toilet often enough or you're going too much, then listen to my short video on how PCOS is actually linked to your digestive health and, and the health of your gut. As if it wasn't enough that PCOS comes with a whole range of hormonal symptoms. I'm talking about anxiety, hair loss, hair growth in places that you really wish it wouldn't, to things like fertility struggles. New research has actually found a very strong link between gut problems and PCOS, which to add insult to injury can at the very best leave you feeling uncomfortable. Let me explain to you why these things are linked and some simple but very effective ways to reduce the gas, beat the bloat and get your energy back. Before we go any further, I just want to quickly introduce myself. My name is Alice Bove and I'm a nutritional therapist. I trained for three years and I do this job more than anything because I want to help to stop people from living in unnecessary pain. So when I was studying in my third year, I started to see um, clients as a student and just by chance, four of the people that came to see me had PCOS. And by the time they'd come to see me, it had taken sort of two plus years to get the diagnosis. They'd been going through all the symptoms, the acne, the fertility struggles, um, you know, the unwanted hair growth. And they were really at a loss of what to do. Um, most of the time, they'd been kind of fobbed off by the doctors been told to go on the pill or just been delivered this diagnosis kind of like a life sentence but without any tools of how to deal with the, the symptoms which actually can be debilitating and um, so I knew then that I really really wanted to help these women and I fixated on PCOS I read all the studies I read all the books and I did as much research as I possibly could to try and help these women um, and I think they were surprised, as was I at first, at how easy, not easy, that's the wrong word, at how quick it was to impact some of these symptoms with diet and lifestyle and some supplements. Um, and I think that is why I do what I do. So that's me. I hope you enjoy this short video. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. How are your PCOS symptoms linked to your gut? So a 2010 study found that 42% of women with PCOS also had irritable bowel syndrome. So irritable bowel syndrome is also, well, as you probably know it, IBS, and it um, can mean a number of different things, lots of different symptoms, but the main ones are sort of the cramping, the bloating, and then the constipation or diarrhea. Um, this study also found that of the women who had PCOS and IBS, um, these women's BMIs, which is body mass index, were significantly higher. Now, PCOS and IBS are similar in the sense that they are syndromes, so they have a collection of symptoms um, with multiple potential causes. So it's not just one thing. IBS isn't just one thing. PCOS isn't just one thing. It's a collection of different things. And once you kind of tick those off on the checklist, a doctor will say, okay, you have got PCOS or you have got IBS. You may have heard about how important gut health is, but why is this? So your gut contains trillions of microbes um, and they're needed for lots and lots of different things but arguably the most important thing is they're needed for your immune system so these microbes make up 70 percent of your immune system and they control how you absorb the food that you eat and how you absorb the nutrients from the food that you eat um, and so there are you've probably heard about this before but there are beneficial microbes or probably you've heard of it as good bacteria and there are harmful microbes and bad bacteria. And when there's an imbalance between the two, which can happen for many different reasons, it causes something called gut dysbiosis. And when there's gut dysbiosis um, and there's not enough good bacteria, it can leave room for the bad bacteria to overgrow and things like yeast and fungi, and that can, um, can cause some really nasty symptoms. So you may have experienced, for example, um, 
a, a flare up of IBS after you've taken a course of antibiotics. And that's because antibiotics, they target bacteria, but not just the bad bacteria that you're trying to get rid of. They target all bacteria and they wipe it out. Um, and that leaves room for sort of nasty things to grow. Research now shows that an imbalance of good and bad bacteria can not only cause IBS, but it can cause inflammation and insulin resistance, which are two of the hallmarks for PCOS. And when you have inflammation and insulin resistance, this can lead to high male hormones. So you may have already heard these referred to as androgens, and you might have had your testosterone tested by the doctor. So when you have high male hormones, so, so firstly let me say that some male hormones is vital and, and all women should have some testosterone for example, but when these become too high that can lead to symptoms that you've probably experienced yourself, so that could be disruption of your cycles, your periods, perhaps you're not ovulating, maybe your hair is thinning, maybe you, um, you've got unwanted hair growth and acne. How this works in a nutshell is your gut lining or your gut wall, which is actually about five foot long, it, it consists of tightly packed cells and they control what goes in and what comes out. So ideally they'll be letting in the nutrients from your food and they'll be keeping out the baddies and keeping out the toxins. But when this becomes impaired and your gut, your gut lining sort of breaks open and becomes a little bit permeable, which can happen from lots of things like stress, alcohol, smoking, and a typical Western diet, which often consists of high sugar foods, processed food, and is really low in things like protein, fiber, and healthy fats. This, this can really become impaired and your body will stop well, we'll start letting in things um, like partially digested food, toxins, bugs, um, and this can wreak havoc on your digestive system and in turn your immune system and can cause big inflammation in the body. Some inflammation is good. For example, when you hurt yourself or when you're sick, your body responds with inflammation as a way of recovery. But long-term inflammation, also known as chronic inflammation, is when this response is not switched off, so it's left running, and it can um, cause lots and lots of different health concerns. But when you link it to PCOS, it, it is linked to insulin resistance, which, as we mentioned earlier, is one of the hallmark signs for PCOS. Insulin is a hormone and it's used in your body to control the amount of sugar in your blood. So when there's too much insulin found in the blood, this usually means that you have insulin resistance and insulin resistance is responsible for your ovaries overproducing testosterone. Too much testosterone can mess up the delicate balance of hormones needed for your monthly cycle and for ovulation. And sometimes you won't ovulate at all if, if this balance is messed up, which might sound familiar to some of you. When you don't ovulate, the egg is not released and the follicles on your ovary that hold the egg stay stuck. And this is what shows up on your ultrasound as PCOS cysts. So if this sounds like you, you're probably thinking, what the hell can I do about it? So first of all, I wanted to start by saying there is so much that you can do to repair and restore an unhealthy gut. For those of you who want really quick targeted action, I suggest working with a nutritionist who offers a range of stool testing um, and who can go through the results with you. So what this basically means is you can get to the bottom of what's going on a lot quicker. It's it Basically, you send off a poo sample to the lab and the scientists will, will look at it and test it for all the different good bacteria, bad bacteria, yeasts, parasites, um, and then also markers for things like inflammation, leaky gut, and they'll send that back to you. And, and when you have these results, you can go through it with your nutritionist and you will then be able to, you know, do a really targeted protocol to top up on the right probiotics and bacteria. Um, and this can be a really good way of getting some quick action. Other things that you can do are to reduce stress. So your gut is linked to your brain and, and there's a lot of research now linking your mood to the state of your digestive system. So really trying to work out what it is that de-stresses you, get, making some time for yourself, 
um, that is a very, very good way to, to start to help your alleviate your gut symptoms. So another one is increasing your fibre. So the Western diet is very, very low in fibre um, and most people I speak to are not getting enough fibre in their diet. So increasing that um, is, a, is a very good thing to do. If you find that increasing your fibre actually worsens your symptoms, then that means that there's something else going on there. So I would suggest speaking to a nutritionist about that. Um, and then to reduce the sugary, the starchy foods, the alcohol, smoking, um, recreational drugs, things like that can wreak havoc on your digestive system. So that is a, is a very good place to start. Um, but the number one thing to remember is that everyone is different. So what is driving your IBS, your PCOS, might not be driving the next person's. So it's really, really important to get to the bottom of what is triggering these symptoms. And from there, you can work out the best plan of attack for you.